Hi there, and welcome to your 2023 Sunseeker 3050 SF. We're just going to start off in the corner of the unit here where you're going to find your standard 30 amp plug. You're going to pull that guy on out. Just take note of that ear there. It's going to line up with this ear on the trailer side. Line those two up. Plug it in. Give it a little eighth turn, and then you got your threaded collar to really lock it down. Just securing that in so that it cannot come unplugged. If you follow that plug back, you find your standard 30 amp plug end. Most campsites should have this, but let's say you're at home or your campsite doesn't have 30 amp service, we do include a 15 amp park adapter. Just keep in mind you are going down to 15 amps of power so you can't run something like your air conditioner. Inside this compartment here is where you're gonna find all your included accessories like your sewer hose, your water hose, and just that 15 amp park adapter I I'm just telling you about. So there's your standard plug, in plug end there. Plug in your 30 amp cord to that. Right here we do have your Furion uh, satellite inlet. Inside this compartment here, you do have your little sewer area. You got your black valve and your gray valve. Black valve is going to be obviously your dirtiest water filling from your toilets. Gray water is going to be your cleaner water. So you are going to want to empty the black water first and then your gray water just so you can try and rinse that hose out a little bit right here is your city water connector so let's say you're out of sight with service you can plug a hose on up into here it pressurizes your line there's no need to run your your uh, water pump you have your exterior shower on your left right here is what we call black tank flush so let's say you emptied your tank you know for a fact it's empty but your monitor panel is still showing it a third or two-thirds full whatever it happens to be Usually it's just some debris hanging between the probes. So you just got, you'll hook up your standard garden hose up to this, turn it on, making sure that you are hooked up, your sewer's hooked up with your valve open. It'll kind of rinse that tank out, which also rinses out some smell. You'll also find right here, you do have a little air nipple that is for the airbags in the back of this unit. So let's say you're towing something or you have a lot of cargo, you can top up those airbags with some air. It'll help it ride a little bit nicer. You got your gas gas store right your gas fill right here. Inside here is just more storage. Inside this compartment is where you're gonna find just your waste bin for inside the unit. More storage in here. Inside here though is where you get access to your Uh, well, it's locked, but this is where you would gain access to your generator. So you just stick your 751 key in there, your little silver key. You'll find access to your generator. You do have this little service port right here, so you can uh, turn those knobs open. Pops on up, and you'll find just where you can do some general service, air filter, that type of deal. That goes on there pretty simply. You just put the bottom in first, then the top. Turn those to close. It's locked in place. You will notice that we do have, you have your generator exhaust right here. You're just going to, whenever you're running your generator, you're going to want to make sure that guy isn't blocked and it does get hot, so don't have anything near it. And on the front of the unit, you just have your typical Ford chassis up front. You come around this side. This is where you are going to find your little propane door. The way, the way your propane works is you're just going to turn that to open it up. Propane is now flowing to the unit. You do have a little gauge here to tell you how full you are. Inside all these, this, these bottom compartments is mainly storage. Right here you do have an exterior TV. Now the way this exterior TV works is you hit that power button, it'll turn the TV on. Now if you hit this source button, it will give you a list of the source and you will see at the bottom here you have Bluetooth, FM radio, and media. So if you go down to F FM radio, give it a second, it'll switch over to FM radio. Now if you hit and hold this button, it will t give you a zone B option. Sorry about that. That was wrong information. 
So the TV inside will be the same way, but the TV inside will give you the option to play music through your exterior speakers. A little further down the unit here, you do have your access to your little hot water tank area. You're going to find your inch and sixteenths drain bolt right here. So let's say you're leaving the unit for a while. You don't want to leave this tank full. You just loosen that off, pull that out. While you have your pressure relief valve open, water will flow out. Whenever you go to fire up this hot water heater, you're always just going to want to give that pressure relief valve a pull. A shot of water should come out. This unit's currently winterized, so there's not going to be any water coming out. But you aren't going to want to fire this up when it's empty because you do run the risk of burning out your probes. I'm going to go over a reset procedure once we get inside. The button I'm referring to is just right here. Right next to that is your furnace exhaust. Whenever you're running that furnace, just keep it in mind this does blow out hot air, so you aren't going to want to block that with anything. You do have a nice little 110 outlet there. Uh, right next to that, you have this door here. You open this up. Now you'll notice there is like a little black door here. This is going to give you access to your uh, hot or your hot water. Give you access to your water pump, where you can find your winterizing option. So to winterize it, you just turn that valve. Use this little hose that Sunseeker does include to attach to this. Put it in your pail of coolant, and that's how you are going to run that through the lines. Inside here is just more storage. Right here, you do have your uh, fresh water fill. So you hook up a garden hose to here. It'll fill your fresh water tank, which your fresh water tank draw or your water pump draws off of. Right up there, you'll notice that lippered mount there. That is for a, lat or a ladder to get up to the roof if you were to want it. In the back here, you do have a hitch as well as a seven pin plug if you were to tow a tow vehicle or a small uh, flat deck behind you. And you do have an observation camera up there. Now to get inside the unit, just pop this door open. First things first, right on your right is your fire extinguisher. Right underneath the stair, you do get access to your coach batteries. Now on your left, this switch does your exterior porch light and the button beside that does your awning LED. Right next to that you do have your awning extend and retract switch. So you're going to hit that awning extend button. The awning is going to start making its way out. Always making sure you're not going to come into contact with anything. You'll know that awning's fully extended when you see the little flap hang down in the back of the metal tube. Just keep in note that sometimes those flaps do get stuck, so you'll just have to retract it quick and extend it back again. Now, if it were to start raining, you are just going to want to take either one of these arms front or rear, give it a pull down. It's going to change the pitch of the awning head, allowing water to then run off. Now, if you do like that angle better, you can do the same thing to the front arm, and it allows for more shade. Always making sure, though, that you push these arms back to straight whenever you retract it. Because otherwise you do run the risk of bending your arms. Whenever you're retracting it, just paying attention to making sure the fabric's rolling the right way in. That way you're not trapping any moisture or water inside there, causing mildew and mold. You're going to know that awning's fully in when it just contacts the side of the unit and it stops, cuts out. Uh, now, before you ever run your uh, stabilizer jacks or your slide outs, the ignition to the unit does have to be on as well as the parking brake. So I'll just go do that quickly right now. So with that ignition on, you do see the screen lights up for the stabilizer jacks. Now that works pretty simply. You got auto level and retract jacks. If you hit this little button here, you can go into your manual settings and your jack lights and stuff. 
hitting that button home just brings you back to the main screen right next to here you do have your solar controller now this honestly does not do a whole lot it is mainly just for monitoring your battery levels so you have a bank one and a bank two that's going to be your battery one and your battery two you can choose between those two and then it'll just tell you everything about the battery really it's the way these solar panels work is you just kind of hook them up and they're charging not much that you can do on there now right above your head if you get inside the unit you do have two coat hangers which is nice uh, you got your light switch for your living room and your kitchen. And then you have your slide out button. Get that slide out out. Slide out's going to start making its way out. This is a full wall slide, so it all goes out at once. When that, when that slide out is fully extended, you are just going to hear the motors cut out. At that point, you can let go of the button. There you go. Fully extended. You do have a driver side light that you can turn on. Uh, so now you have your water heater section. Now you can fire your water heater on gas or electric. Whenever you do fire it on gas, you're going to hit that button. Fault light's going to come on. Now that water heater is going to try and light itself third, three times. If on the third try it doesn't light, this fault light is going to stay on. And at that point, turn, turn this off. Go hit that reset button I told you about on the outside. Turn this back on and it'll try and relight itself. Uh, right next to that, you have your water pump switch, and right next to that, you have your Arctic pack. Now, Arctic pack is just little heating pads on the bottom of your tanks. It allows for you to go into that little bit of an extended camping season. Uh, and then you just have your monitor area here, so you hit your LPG is propane liquid. So you got uh, empty, a third, two-thirds, and full. Your battery low fair good and c is charging and then you get your fresh your black and your gray which is empty a third two thirds and full uh, and then you have your generator switch right here so the way that works is you hit that stop slash prime hold it for a second that light's going to come on give it another second let go hit the start button fires right on up and you have power turn it off you just hit that button again turns itself off. Uh, if you take a step on inside the unit, we do have this nice couch here, which has seat belts, so you can have people sit here while traveling. This does fold down into a bed. The way that works is you just got to grab it, grab the foot of the bed, kind of help it, and it folds out, and now you have another bed. You can tuck those seat belts down underneath the couch if someone were to sleep here. Then to fold it back up, you just grab the foot of the bed and grab the grab the foot of the couch and the top of the couch, and it just folds right back, nice and easy. Up here is just storage space, as well as up here. Right here, you do have a plug, as well as a US or HDMI plug-in and a satellite plug-in. And right here is your main satellite plug-in for that TV on the wall there. See that little green button there? That's just telling you that, that uh, the satellite is on. We usually keep them on because it increases radio frequency, but you can turn them off. Up on the top bunk here, you do have this nice little piece that comes and fills in right here. And then you do have this ladder, which just hooks into these slots here, so you have a nice way to get up and down. And then... On the top here, you do have a little storage area as well as a USB plug-in underneath the, I guess, the head of the bed. The, the ladder does clip into these nice little slots here, so that way it's not bouncing around whenever you're traveling. Uh, the TV works just like the one outside. I'll just show you that feature to turn on the exterior speakers quick. So you're already on the FM section I told you about where you hit the source button. So you hit this speaker button, hold it, and you got zone B source. So you hit that speaker button, you go zone A, which is the interior speakers. Now you go to zone B. If you hold that, you can go from FM to Bluetooth. Uh, sorry, just give me a second here. 
hit that button again, zone A, hit that button, zone B, so you can turn it off and on. If you hit that button again, you get to the volume, so you can turn it up and down. That's the way that works. Uh, in the dinette area, again, this is another spot where you could turn it into a bed. You just got to... Uh, I think it works on a spring assist system. I'll have to look into that, how that works and get back to you. Yeah, I'll have to look into that and we will patch that into the video. Uh, in the kitchen area, you do have these wireless charging sections. So you can put your phone on there and it charges it up. Above here is all extra storage for the kitchen. This leads this little cap here just leads to the garbage that was that you can empty from the outside you do have your fridge and freezer beside that is a nice little pantry with some sliding little holders right down from there you do have your fuse and breaker panel. Now whenever a breaker pops, it's going to sit in the middle, so you just got to turn it off and then back on to reset it. And then you have all your fuses down here. Right here you do have your uh, LP detector. Propane's heavier than air, it's going to sit on the ground. That guy's going to detect it. If that guy ever starts going off, you are just going to want to turn off the supply of propane to the unit, open all the windows, air this place out. Uh, you got your kitchen sink, hot and cold water. You do have your light switch for your uh, above your stove. And the other switch does do under here. And you do also have the same light on this side here above the dinette. A nice little light strip. And as well as USB plug above the dinette. And you do also have the same matching underglow light on this side. All the blinds in the unit kind of work the same way. They kind of sit where you leave them. And you just pull it again, and they'll slide on up. Uh, right here is your stove. This is glass, so just being careful whenever you're opening and closing it. I don't have a lighter on me today, so I can't light it. But it just works pretty simple. You turn it up on high. You hit that with a lighter and it would fire right on up. Uh, right down below from that is your convection oven slash microwave. And you do have nice storage. Just keep in, in mind of your water lines and drains here. Underneath the fridge, there is this panel. There's four screws holding this panel in. This is where you're gonna gain access to your hot water tank for your bypass valves for winterization. You will notice that this little button here does turn on these blue lights on the knobs. You get to the uh, bathroom area. You will notice above your head you have this nice skylight. It is nice that they included this shade so that if you're in the bedroom sleeping at night and you don't want the sun shining in, you can close it. Uh, on your left here, you will notice this is the main GFI plug. So if you ever have a plug that doesn't work, this should be the first spot you check. You got test on the bottom, reset up top. Whenever that green light's on, that means the plugs are live and you're good. Medicine cabinet, as well as just some more storage underneath. Right here, you do have the toilet and the shower. Uh, whenever you're using the bathroom, you do have this little sliding door. The way that works is you just pull that down. It unlocks it from its travel latch. You can close it. And you can also lock it there for while you're traveling. But just whenever you're traveling, you are just going to want to make sure that it is locked in place so it's not sliding around too much. Uh, in the bedroom area, light switch on the left. Uh, you do have storage on the one side of the bed and above each side of the bed you do have these little lights so you just tap them to turn them on 
and they do have USB plugins as well on those. And on the wall here, you do have your thermostat. <clears throat> the way that works is you're going to hit this button and it's going to turn on the fan at first. So at this point, you're just moving air around with the air conditioning fan. And at any point, you hit the fan button and you can go from high to low. And you turn it on. Now you get to cool. So now you're cooling with the fan on full time. If you hit the fan button again, you go into fan auto fan. So now it becomes an on demand system. So it's going to kick in and out as needed. And you hit the button again, it goes into a low fan with auto. But if you want it on full time, you just leave it on fan on. You hit the mode button again and you get into the heat pump option. Now the heat pump option isn't hooked, actually hooked up to anything because these units do not have that. But if you hit the button again, you go, do go, get into furnace. Now with that furnace on, just keeping in mind it is lit with propane. Just keep that in mind whenever you're running the furnace. The furnace does move its air through all the floor portals you see around the unit. Hit that button again and you just get into off. Temperature is obviously up and down. Inside the, you do have nice light in here as well as a hanging system. You get another, another TV in the bedroom area. And if you, there's a little tab on this side of the TV if you want to hook something up. You just give this tab a pull, pops on open. You can pop a DVD player or you can keep extra clothes in there. And you do have a plug inside this cabinet as well. Now this back uh, window here, it is also a fire exit. Now the way that works is you just take these tabs, flip them off. The window flips out. You can get on out. And then to lock it into place, you just relock it. That's about it for this unit here. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call.